hello everyone, my name is Victoria and I'm going to give my presentation on um, BIM project progression auditing system, um, a look at use case methods and the Revit plugin prototype. The project is basically um, identifying metrics for auditing projects as they go from one phase to the other um, and defining a set of use cases for a system that can help managers to better manage that process. But um, a bit of an introduction. So at the beginning of a project, managers usually require a, an accurate estimation of the project even before they have any real data. So at the early design phase, they are often required to make cost estimates and schedule projections based on past projects um, as it exists currently, these kinds of decisions are made based on intuition and experience of the professional and not necessarily data. And the reason for this is even though we have moved towards a more technology focused approach um, using BIM and using other forms of technology, we are still storing information in largely fragmented ways in emails, PDFs, different folders, and even when we have them created as data, they are still in different file formats. So it's still difficult for design managers to extract the intelligence they need from data. And so they still end up making decisions based on feelings or, or experience. So usually when you have data fragmented, it can be possible to make some kind of intelligent projections if it's just one project. But as the project starts to increase in size and complexity, you have more than enough information that could be useful, but it's difficult to sift through because there is no systematic way of collecting them. And so this is what forms the basis of my research because when there are several inputs and several updates and several stakeholders, how can the value of information be derived? Now in a project, the main metrics um, being, uh, being examined are its success in terms of ability to keep to time, cost and to meet a required quality. So these are the main um, metrics I was able to identify largely from research in terms of identifying the success of a project. Now, the, the, the readings I did showed that when it came to time, there's a significant delay um, caused in project completion when the design phase is not properly managed and that the design process actually accounts for five to 10% of the entire project cost. Properly auditing a design will reduce a need for change orders at the construction phase. But in spite of this knowledge, in spite of this um, research, most of the BIM tools focus on optimizing progress monitoring and scheduling at the construction phase and neglect the design phase. And they're collecting information at the design phase, usually about the building itself and not um, the final product. Um, sorry, they're collecting information about the final product, which is the building and not the process itself. So there is a kind of neglect of collecting data that can support decision making at the early design stage. There's a lot of research on the construction phase. So my research is focused on the early design phase. And um, my hypothesis is that if I am able to automate the gathering of design progress data, it will enhance accuracy in predicting costs, quality requirements, and completion cycles in the future. So for the future projects, there will be data to support those metrics at the early design phase. So the objective was to design a system that will collect a trail of these information metrics, um, define use cases for the system and explore ways to apply the system and then prototype one of those use cases in a BIM software. In this case, it's, it's Revit. So first thing I did was to do a high level overview of how um, design projects are being audited currently, how the data is collected in the typical early design phase now and how um, it's recorded. And then I went further to see what would happen if my system was implemented into the process and how that would change how the data is recorded. So um, after giving a high level overview, I went further to do a deeper dive into the process to try and identify where data could be collected. Like um, the, the areas highlighted are basically opportunities to collect data that can inform future decision-making. 
Um, the other thing I did was to check if these tools already existed in the industry. Of course, we all know that there are several tools that you can use to, to manage projects. Um, and this study by um, Shafiq was able to actually analyze most of the popular ones we know, like Graphisoft, Autodesk, most of the big name companies who have uh, produce tools for managing projects and common data environments and the rest. And even though they all had um, all the all the information highlighted in the bubbles were present in those tools, they had synchronization. You could reuse the information. You could check the dis, um, ownership of data that was created. There was no specific way of tracking user input. So even though um, there's a record of revisions, you can actually identify who did specifically what in the project. And even when you can't do that, it's usually restricted to a set of work sets. There is no um, specific data tying, for example, an element geometry to who created the element. Um, some of them had um, functionality for compliance checking, but not all of them. Um, almost none of them tracked how much time was being spent on the project. Um, none of them provided like a complete summary of a project completion cycle. So the project took X amount of time. It was not present. Um, there was not really a lessons learned database or a project cost summary. And so even with these fancy um, um, expensive tools, it will still be difficult to quickly get this data at the early design phase to make predictions. So I decided that my system should capture those informations and leave a trail for people who are working on the project in the future to be able to access um, if they are even if they're retrospectively going into the project to group different information uses together. It should, should be decentralized so that everyone can access it when needed. And it should address information latency when there is a gap in um, moving information from one phase to the other, for example, from design to construction. And so what I did was to kind of define five key um, system requirements that would actually address these needs. So if a system is able to address the needs for version control, schedule management, team management, quality control, and knowledge management, then it would actually serve the different actors in the project and meet the needs for progress monitoring. Um, these were defined in detail in the research as use case diagrams with specific ways the system would solve these needs. And um, some of the um, actions that each of these uh, use cases would meet are listed here. This is just a brief um, list and the research covers it more in detail. Um, but I highlighted in color the aspects which I focused on for the prototype. So I picked a few um, system requirements from each of the five areas I identified that I felt were most valuable for providing quality information for business decision-making. And these were um, included in designing the prototype. So for the prototype, I selected Revit because it's really popular and well um, adopted in the industry. Uh, C -sharp, um, .NET was used to compile the plugin and the data which will be extracted was um, extracted in CSV because it will be easy to manipulate uh, manually, but also using the business intelligence tool like Power BI. And all of these skills were uh, acquired during the process of the research. So I will quickly do a demonstration of what the plugin does in Revit, um, but this is a summary of the methodology of how to use the plugin in practice. So the data will be, uh, was extracted using the plugin, but also the geometry, which I wanted to analyze outside of a typical BIM environment um, for interoperability reasons, I used a Kobe toolkit, which was provided by the company. This research was done in, in, col in collaboration with uh, Kobe Labs in Slovenia. So um, are you able to see Revit now? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Great. So this is, a, it's, a, it's just a prototype. Um, it's not fully functional or registered in Autodesk. So what happens is as soon as the project starts, you are, it's already recording each action being taken. So if I, for example, place a door on this wall here, um, it records that. And if I go into the changes, I'm able to see 
essentially a record of when it was changed, the idea of the element, what was done, which was an addition. And if I want to further um, inspect this element, I can select the ID and it basically goes into the, the model to tell me what was um, worked on. Now, this is just a simple demonstration. Um, if I go back to my presentation, you can see that in a typical complex project, you would have a ton of data that would be difficult to actually go through manually one after the other. Um, it would take too much time. So initially, I thought of ways to combine this data so you could use it in an analysis tool. And I thought about using uh, hashes, MD5 hashes. But what I found was it did not solve the problem of having to go through too many lines of data. So instead, um, I decided that they will be combined by action. So this slide shows basically using Power BI to separate the, act, the elements that were modified and it, it's able, easy, able to represent it in different formats, both in um, building elements that we can recognize and in charts. And it's also able to give us a table of which elements were actually modified so that the design manager can quickly check this um, inputs. And this is, at, um, um, elements that were added. And in summary, um, the system was actually quite successful for the scale that we were looking at. Um, it's interoperable because you can view and analyze the data outside of a typical BIM environment. So anyone can use this to get important information, not necessarily the engineers alone, even the um, accounting team and human resources team who are part of this process and, we are, and, and are often ignored. Um, the opportunities is that if this is um, developed further, it could have a, it could form a historical database which can be um, added with AI tools like regression and uh, clustering and all of that to kind of make more intelligent predictions, which is the purpose of the system. And if there is a database um, that is more robust, because right now I'm just using a CSV file, then it would be easier to kind of search through to see. Uh, maybe the amount of time it takes to complete a specific kind of model or a specific kind of project. Um, at the moment, it's only suitable when it's being used in one location. So if, for example, it's applied in a remote collaboration scenario or, or files are being sent from one place to the other, um, there may be issues because then the, the file locations change. And at the moment, the spreadsheet formats for reporting results, which I have, may be too much to actually be useful, even though it can be exported and analyzed for that. So these are weaknesses to the current prototype, which could be addressed. There is also obviously a risk of collecting too much data because it's recording every single action and perhaps not all that data is needed. So um, as the system is tested with actual users, it could be improved. And of course, because it's, it's not restricted to the BIM software, there is a risk of data breaches um, and people being uh, misusing the data because you can access it even if you don't necessarily have access to the BIM tool. Um, it could be designed for more systems of uh, complexity. Um, right now it's quite simple and straightforward, but it, it can be of course made to be more robust. It can be implemented in work shared projects where there's a common data environment and um, it would be helpful to do more user testing of the prototype, link the data directly with geometry so that um, there's a property set inside of Revit that actually has this data um, in case it doesn't necessarily require being exported for analysis elsewhere. The, all the intelligence gathering can be done inside of Revit itself. And of course, it should be tested with the IFC because we are moving towards an open BIM um, future that's not restricted to one software alone. So thank you for listening. Um, that is my presentation. I will now take questions if there are any.